Hello, you are welcome to today's Bible study. The last time we met, we talked about God's grace. I am Brother Hosanna David. Today, we want to talk about the major works of grace. Grace is not useless. We are to make use of the grace of God in our lives. The grace of God has appeared to all men. So what is the work of grace? That is what we are going to talk about today. The major works of grace. Grace is one of the most misunderstood words in the Bible. A lot of people don't actually care about the true meaning of grace because they want to they want the interpretation that suits their life of sin. But what actually is grace? So this is what we want to talk about today. And by the grace of God, we are going to look at some Bible verses. Let's read Titus chapter 2, 14, uh, 11 to 13. I believe that this captures everything that we want to talk about today. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 13. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So this is our test for today. And we are going to break this test down as we continue with today's Bible study. But let me read, let me show you these two things. I want you to have true understanding of grace and salvation. So let us look at these two things we must understand about grace and salvation. Number one, salvation is not by works. We don't work for it, therefore we should not be legalistic. Then two, the grace of God is not a license to sin, Jude chapter Jude 4. Therefore we must not take the grace of God as a license to lasciviousness. We should not, we are not saved by works, but every saved Christian must bear the fruit of repentance that is do good works this is because they have been born again of god therefore they must have the nature of god that nature is a nature of goodness except we have this understanding we may not understand the true meaning of grace the grace of god has appeared to all men what does grace do that is what we want to talk about today. We must not take the grace of God as a cloak, as a license to do evil. And we must not also be legalistic because we are not saved by works. We are saved by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So uh, I'm going to do another Bible study. In the next Bible study, I'm going to talk about the boundaries, the boundaries between grace. Grace is in the middle and we're going to talk about works and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about saved by faith and we are also going to look at the other side, legalistic, not being legalistic, not trying to save yourself by work we are going to look at active faith the faith that is alive a lot of people preach grace as a license to sin and they say once you are saved you are always saved you can do anything you want but the bible says shall we continue in sin that grace may abound what is the answer the answer is no god forbid we must not continue in sin. So, should we, another question is, should we 
work to earn our salvation. You know, we don't work to earn our salvation. So let us look at today's Bible study and we will have better understanding of these things we want to talk about. And today we want to look at these three works of grace. These are not the whole works of grace, but we're going to look at these three works of grace. What are the works of grace? What are the works of grace? Grace has work, and that is exactly what we want to talk about today. Number one, we are saved by grace and not by our efforts. We are saved by grace alone, not because we worked for it, by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Then number two, God's grace trains us who are saved in godliness. The grace of God is a teacher. We are going to talk about that. Then number three, grace enables us to do the work of God's kingdom. Grace enables us to do the work of God's kingdom. So these things are very, very important and we must by no means miss any of these three. So now let us look at these three things. Number one, we are saved by grace and not by our efforts. Let's read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not through works, not through our own effort, just by grace. By grace, through our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And this is not your own doing. It wasn't my doing at all. It is the gift of God. This is God's own gift to us. Salvation has to do with the finished work of Jesus Christ. When we were lost in sin, when the devil was expecting judgment, when he was expecting condemnation, when he was expecting a casting away, God sent his only begotten son to come and save us from our sins. And we didn't work for it. Purchased the garment of salvation with his own blood and gave us this garment of righteousness, free of charge, not by works. We were given this garment of righteousness. And what did we do? Nothing, nothing at all. We owe the debt of sin. And he came, paid the debt, opened the prison door and said, I've paid, you're free, go home. Go home and see no more. But we have the nature of sin in ourselves. So what do we do? Grace continues her work from there. Now let's continue with the next passage. For the grace of God has appeared. It has appeared to all men, bringing salvation for all people, Titus 2.11. Remember what Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is free. Salvation is free. We are saved by God's grace. So one of the works of God's grace is salvation. Grace brings salvation. And by faith in the finished work of Christ, we are saved. Not by works, but by the finished work of Christ alone. Praise the Lord. So let us also look at another work of grace. What after grace saves us, does the work of grace end there? No, it never ends there. When grace helps us to attain salvation, 
grace also continues it, grace continues the work of training us because we come to God with a nature of flesh but we can't continue with that nature so another work of grace begins from there and that is what we want to look at in this next one God's grace trains us who are saved in godliness yes this is another work of grace God's grace trains us who are saved in godliness God's grace does not leave us alone as we are saved God's grace continues this work what is the work the work of training us so that we can become like Christ so that we can become like our maker is it God wonderful about the work of grace the work of grace is not complete until we are trained God's grace trains us who are saved in godliness look at the Titus 2 12 teaching us that this is grace teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world so grace also trains us if grace gives us salvation if we get salvation by grace through our faith in the finished work of Christ and grace leaves us then there will be a chaos because we have the Adamic nature grace helps us to be born again it is not the moment you get baptized that your bad characters go away it's not the day you give your life to Christ that your pride goes away I know that day you have a change of mind you surrender the totality of your life to Jesus Christ but the nature of sin does not go away immediately there are some things you need to work on and that is what we call working out your salvation with fear and trembling you need to work on yourself the devil will still come around so grace helps us to grow from the moment we receive the free gift of salvation grace after giving us salvation grace continues the work from there by how by teaching us that denying our godliness and worldly lust we should live soberly we grace helps us to live a sober this if let me explain this looks like a legalistic teaching but this is bible so grace is this teaches us that grace is not a license to sin in the next bible study we are going to look at this very deeply grace teaches us that we must deny ungodliness every form of ungodliness every appearance of evil and every worldly lust this is a work of grace and grace helps us to live soberly and righteously and godly our relationship with men our relationship with God in this present world this is a work of grace if you start telling people that now that you have been saved you need to live a godly life you need to you need to uh, stay away from a uh, shun worthy loss you need to stay away from every form of godliness you must live godly life you must live a righteous life you know what they are going to tell you you are being legalistic where do we draw the line in the next bible study we are going to talk about where to actually draw 
the line between living under grace and not under the law and not taking grace as a license to continue in sin. This is very, very important. Let's look at the number three. Grace enables us to do the work of God's kingdom. Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore, we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Grace helps us to do the work of God. Grace gives us strength. In the last Bible study, I said grace is a supernatural strength that enables you, is a divine strength that enables you to do the things which you wouldn't have been able to do ordinarily. Grace helps you to overcome sin. Grace helps you to accomplish the assignment that God has given to you as a Christian. Let's look at the next passage. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Ephesians 4, 7. Lastly, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Grace enables us to do the work of God's kingdom, not by power, for by strength no man prevails. Paul said, I am what I am by God's grace, not by personal strength. I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. If God doesn't supply the grace that enables you to do the things you have been assigned to do, you will not be able to do them. Remember when Peter was boasting, Jesus, no, nobody can kill you. Nobody. I will go to prison for your sake. Jesus told him that Satan has saved you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. He was boasting that my strength is enough. He forgot that by strength, no man prevails. Except God supplies a grace, we will do nothing. A lot of times when we pass through horrible times, God supplies the strength that we need. God doesn't bring helicopters to take us through the waters. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the fire, he doesn't bring fire extinguishers to come and firefighters to come and quench the fire. No. Rather, he comes down becomes the first man in the fire, as it happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He becomes the first man in the fire and gives you grace. So people are seeing you that you are passing through the fire, but you are not being burned. That is what God's grace can do. And sometimes when we want to worship God and we think about the things we have overcome and everything we have done, we start crying. Because we know by our own strength, we wouldn't have been able to do those things. Sometimes when we look back and see everything we have accomplished, we ascribe all the glory to God because we know that by our own strength alone, we will not be able to do these things. Grace gives us the strength that we need in life to enable us to accomplish our assignments in this world. Some people think that by their own strength, they can overcome, but that is a lie. By strength, we can never overcome. 
let us at every point in time know that God is with us and that He supplies a grace to enable us to overcome everything that comes our way. How many of us are relying on God's grace? How many of us believe in the finished work of Christ? Is the grace of God working in your life? We must submit to God's grace. Some of us, we don't want to submit. When we see temptations, we give up. We think that uh, by our strength alone, we will not prevail. But this is not about strength. This is about Christ. I remember when I gave my life to Christ. There were ladies around me and I was weak. I was, I, in fact, it was a time I made up my mind that, okay, I need to have a girlfriend. I gave my life to Christ when I was in primary school. And when I started secondary, I made up my mind, okay, I need to have a girlfriend. And there were some ladies around me. I wanted to choose. But when I received the altar call in an open air crusade, I told myself, today I must give my life to Christ finally. I'm not looking back anymore. So immediately the preacher said, if you want to give your life to Christ, come out. I was the first person to come out. This is why I'm telling you this thing. After I came out, I did the normal thing, said the sinner's prayer, they prayed for me. But when I got home, each time I want to pray, I will be crying. What was making me to cry was that, God, I don't want to look back. I don't want to backslide. But I don't have strength. I can't resist temptation. So I was without strength, but I was filled with the zeal to follow God. No strength. Zero strength in me. But I was willing to follow. I, I've said it a lot of times. I've said this a lot of times. That if you lack strength, don't lack zeal. If you have no strength to move on, don't ever lack zeal. Because when God looks at your heart, that you are poor in your strength, but you are willing to follow, He supplies you the grace to continue. He supplies the grace to overcome. How many of you think that you can survive that situation? Cast your burden upon Him. And he will care for you and see you through. Do not in any way rely on your own understanding. Do not rely on your own strength because your strength will definitely fail you. But if you rely on the strength of the Lord, you will overcome that temptation. These are the three works of grace. Before we round off, I just want to uh, recap them. The three main works of grace. Number one, we, have saved, we are saved by grace and not by our own effort, not by works. Two, God's grace trains us who are saved in godliness. Three, grace enables us to do the, works, the work of God's kingdom. If God's grace is not a work in your life, you need to activate God's grace. You could be having addiction challenge. You could be having challenges with your faith. Maybe your faith is growing downward, is dwindling. But 
rely on God's finished work and you will overcome. This is not a time to give up. We make heaven by grace, not by strength. The same grace that saves us, that same grace trains us, that same grace keeps us, that same grace washes over us. God's grace never finishes her work until we find ourselves in the bosom of our God. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we thank you for today's Bible study. We give you praise. Receive all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you continue to work in our hearts, supply all the grace that we need. Lord God, as many who are weak, supply grace in abundance. Your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. Lord, those who are facing one challenge or the other, those who are weak in their faith, those who are weak and are giving up on you, Lord, give them grace. Let your grace be activated in our lives. Lord, I pray for as many who are having one challenge or the other. Lord, visit them in their challenges. Those who have no job, those who can't eat, those who are living in sin, those who are hooked up by addictions, they are willing to come out, but they are unable. Lord, supply your grace. Those who don't know you, Lord, supply your grace. May your grace appear to them. Lord, I also pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry that you will never allow their pockets to run dry. Lord, bless your people and those who don't even have. Lord, recession is very strong. Inflation is so high. Lord, supply all the needs of your children. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, before I end this message, please, uh, this Bible study, please try to subscribe to this YouTube channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations, and my, also my YouTube channel, Hosanna E. Interview. If you like watching on Facebook, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations, and Hosanna E. Interview. Uh, those of you who have been supporting our ministry, we want to say thank you so much. May the Lord God Almighty bless you abundantly. Uh, but so everything you have given to support the truth is never in vain. Let me just tell you, but so everything you give after our ministry, the next priority is our charity organization, Hosanna David Foundation. And we have over 60 children on scholarship. We have some widows. We, have, we are doing youth empowerment. We want to start computer training and other programs video editing videography and for free um, graphic design uh, digital marketing web design we want to start it for free by god's grace next month december so that we can also lift people from poverty so your giving is never in vain and i pray that the lord god almighty bless you richly don't forget to share our videos and don't forget to recommend this ministry to others the narrow is christ for initials thank you and god bless you see you next time bye bye